in this demo, we're going to talk about the uh, headlamps. This is what it looks like. And that's a uh, blouse found on a human, which is always fun to look at. It's pretty gross. It also has a lot of very interesting forms to it. And so it's going to be a pretty neat construction to look at. The main things that I'm interested in here are the fact that it's got this kind of ribbing to it with very clear effects on the silhouette, which kind of help solidify this kind of object. So that's going to be pretty fun to get into. So I'm going to move this aside and I'll show you how I would tackle this. So as with the WASP demo, we are going to start off with the same major masses as always. We've got our head. head, thorax, abdomen, and we are basically just trying to get a ballpark kind of estimation of how big they're going to be relative to one another. And again, with the head, we are not trying to encapsulate the entire thing. We are just creating a central building block onto which we will can add other forms. We are starting off dead simple. We're not worrying about all this other flair here. We are focusing in on the core of it. And that's one interesting thing about this particular construction, or rather this subject matter. It's semi-translucent, so we can kind of get the, uh, the feeling that a lot of this extra mass here is not necessarily core to the uh, object. And so I have just focused on what I can see right here. And so that's what I've done here. So moving on, um, now I'm starting to add additional forms. So you can see here that I've added this sort of skirt and I've added contour lines to really help reinforce that skirt uh, because I do want it to feel three-dimensional. Once again, I'm still not dealing with a lot of this extra ribbing here we will get into that very soon, but not just yet. I still want to focus on not adding anything that is going to, you know, fall flat because it doesn't have the supporting elements that it needs just yet. We're building those supports and we'll kind of build up complexity as we go. Additionally, for the head here, I've added two things. First off, the only thing you can very clearly see in this reference are these little beady eyes, which are black, but we're not going to color them in black because we're treating this construction as though the whole thing is some flat mid-tone. We don't want to worry about any local colors or anything because we're not coloring it. But this beady little eye actually sits on a base. And now if I can make this thing bigger, you can see that it's got this kind of a whole other form here that is present on which the beady little eye seems to rest. Or at least I'm assuming that's an eye. But anyway, so I've got these additional forms. Our main cranium is really just here. And so in our construction, I've gone ahead and added those both those forms. So I've got my, my cranium the extra kind of supporting mass, and then the beady little eye. And I've also established a center line by which to make sure that I'm keeping everything aligned. And the center line is following along the curvature of the surface of the form. And I've also got this kind of, I don't know what it is, but it's the front of the head, so I'm trying to add that in as well. I haven't worried too much about the antennae yet, but we will get to that.
Next, I want to put in the legs. So before I do that, I want to understand where they're going to connect to the body. And so I lay down these contour ellipses that are serving as like a preemptive footprint for where they're going to connect. And I do this on both sides of the body. This is not sitting where we where it would generally be visible. It's actually on the opposite side. So it would generally be hidden, but we're drawing through our forms so that we can fully understand how everything is fitting together. Next, the legs are being built out as simple sausages. And so I'm not sure if you've seen the wasp demo yet. You should have. But a sausage is really the ideal form for building chains of uh, legs or leg segments. And the reason is because they flow very nicely. Whereas sometimes you'll see people using a tube or a series of tubes. And this can be all right, but it honestly doesn't give the kind of back and forth rhythm that I really like. And alternatively, some people will try and use stretched spheres, which due to their nature in that they're kind of expanding and then immediately contracting, they cannot really be bent. So they're not particularly flexible. As soon as you try and make them flexible, what you end up with is a sausage, which is essentially two spheres connected by a tube. And this tube has a consistent width through its length. And so that's what I'm using here. Simple sausage forms. Um, and generally, you do want to I haven't actually done this in the in this drawing, but whenever your sausages overlap, it helps a great deal to actually reinforce where they intersect with a nice contour line, and this will help solidify the whole form. You won't end up having to me uh, having to add additional contour lines through their lengths. So you can avoid stiffening it up any further. You really just need to reinforce the joints and this will take care of itself. So that gives you that sort of gestural flow while also allowing you to keep things solid and three-dimensional. And you'll notice here, I haven't done anything with the claws yet. So there is more to be built on, but I didn't want to get too ahead of myself. Next. Basically the same deal. I've built out these additional, there's the same kind of supporting mass for the antennae. And so I've built that out here. Now I've established where it's gonna where the antenna is gonna connect. And I've built out simple little lines to just to establish the path that it's gonna take through space. I didn't do that for the legs, I could have, but I felt that the flow of the sausages was enough. Uh, whereas here, I've got a lot of smaller components, so I wanted to make sure that they were all following the, uh, the correct path. It's really, it's just another tool that you have in your toolbox that you can use. You can choose to build things along a, an established line, or you can wing it and like just free, freely construct and maintain whatever rhythm comes of it. Both have their advantages because this can be a little bit more freely flowing, but this allows you to control that path a little bit better if you need to. As you get more experience in this kind of drawing, eventually it won't matter which one you choose. And so now I've drawn these out. I did notice that these were less sausage-like, so they didn't have that same kind of gestural flow. So I did opt to using something a little bit more like stretched spheres, where that stiffness wasn't such a problem. And in fact, it's actually much more in line with what I'm seeing here. So pick the tool that best suits the job. Don't go in blindly saying, well, I always have to use this tool because that's the technique that's, that's said in this demo. You need to think about what goes a little bit deeper. You need to think about what you're trying to achieve and which tool and which approach will work best for that goal. Now I'm building out the that ribbing along the, uh, there's some along the thorax and it's mostly along the abdomen. 
And so there are two elements to it. First off, before I added the actual, the contour lines that kind of went around like this, I established these lines here. Because that's exactly what I see along the reference. They don't just exist like this, a continual kind of encompassing contour line, but rather they kind of bubble out and they mer they have these points where they come back together. And so I wanted to capture that and the easiest way to establish where they were going to come together and keep everything structured was to, to put down these lines marking that, uh, that length. And so from there, I simply built, they're very simple forms. So if you have a, uh, a ball like this, let's just make it more three-dimensional, I'm really just wrapping a contour line around it. And then breaking that silhouette nicely to create those bumps. and so on and so forth. And it's really just taking advantage of the silhouette more than anything else. Because anything that ends up on the silhouette is going to have a huge impact to how that form is actually interpreted by the eye. Now I just add more forms. That's basically what construction comes down to, just adding more and more forms, building up complexity in successive passes, rather than trying to jump into solving all your problems, all your spatial problems, all at the same time. I'm just adding more and more of these forms. And then finally, in the last step, I add simple little shadows and line weight to distinguish my construction because up until that point, I was adding a little bit of line weight here and there just to keep things straight in my eyes, but that extra little push really helped separate those forms. And I also added, you've got all these tiny little hairs and things coming off the body. You don't need to draw every single one. You just need to draw enough to communicate to the viewer that this creature has little hairs. And so I could have added a few more just to kind of round out the idea, but you don't need to add nearly as many as you actually see in the reference. And essentially that's it. That's how we construct this louse. So the step-by-step uh, -step breakdown of this demo will be available in well, on the Drawbox website as a, uh, you know, um, uh, written out text with each phase, so you can follow along with that a little bit better. Um, make sure that you that take a look, because it's not always easy to follow along with a video that's continually going forwards, where you may want to pause and stop and think about things a little bit.